What is going on, everybody? I'm back with the Seahawks post-game recap today. Um, Seahawks lose 30-24 to to the Carolina Panthers, dropping currently out of the playoff picture. Still miraculously alive for it, but definitely on the outside looking in right now. I was going to do a live stream, um, and I guess your account has to be like activated or something for 24 hours. I was hoping to maybe get some Hawks fans in here, shoot the you-know-what a little bit, and talk about the game, the, the best therapy sessions, we can do it together. Um, I, I always pride myself in being optimistic. Um, I consider myself an optimistic person, um, someone that always tries to look for the good and everything. So we're going to start on the optimistic side. And the most optimistic thing for the Seahawks today is the long-term outlook of this team is really, really, really strong. Um, don't let these recent struggles make you think that this rookie class isn't still successful. You've got both tackles um, identified and solidified with Charles Cross and Abe Lucas. You've got a potential all-pro at corner in Tariq Woolen. You have got a really good running back in Kenneth Walker. I, I still think he needs to show, you know, maybe a little more consistency at times. You know, he's had a couple boom and bust games, but you at least have a really good runner. And Kenneth Walker, you've got what looks to maybe be a pretty good nickel in Kobe Bryant. He's had some lows this year, but he can force turnovers we've seen. And he's actually had a couple interceptions called back from penalties, which is more than any nickel has given Seattle since maybe when Justin Coleman was first here in his first tour of duty with the Seahawks. So at the very least, you've got a nickel corner that is capable of of um, forcing turnovers. You've got, it looks like a, a solid rotational player. He hasn't really flashed yet in Boye Mafe. Um, I'm trying to think if I missed anybody here. Drake Young looks like a good special teams player. I'm getting kind of the bottom of the barrel with the, you know, digging deep there. But, you know, we've talked about that. You've got the two tackles, you know, everything else. Um, right now, you are sitting at the number two pick in next year's draft. I believe number 18, number 35, and number... 49 or 50 something in, in along those lines so you were going into a draft you've got a team that is played well this year for the most part you know they've had some hiccups and, and they have some holes and now you're going and you with an amazing rookie draft class one of the best we've seen recently and you're going to in a year where you literally might have the pick of any player you want in this draft now the number two pick is not guaranteed denver played kansas city tough day they lost um, they've got Arizona coming up and the Rams. So they've got a, a couple winnable games in there. Um, not enough to make a huge dent, but enough to maybe get them to like six pick or something like that. But we're just talking about right now. And right now that pick would sit at number two. Um, I, I think we all agree. The Texans are probably taking Bryce young. Um, it could surprise us. Maybe they just don't fall in love with Bryce young and they do go with the Jalen Carter, but to assume they take Bryce young, which I think is a fair assumption. Seattle has a chance to get Jalen Carter on that defensive line. That alone would be a, a massive win for this team with this rookie class and so you get Jalen Carter. And you still have your pick in the end of the first round. And the Seattle team loves to trade down. They can end up like trading down and get picked 24, 27, and then 35 as well. I mean, they could have five picks in the top 50 here. So this team is sitting in an amazing, amazing position for the long term. So don't let the short-term disappointment drag you down, look at the long term and what this team has. Because at the end of the day, it truly wasn't about this year. Now, we all got caught up in it. I did too. They were 6-3. and three. They've so, they've shown some signs. I actually will stand here and say I still think there's a chance they get in the playoffs. But listen, they're, they're probably not winning the Super Bowl. I think I'm all about finding common ground and everything in life. I think we can find common ground to say the Seahawks team is not winning the Super Bowl this year. You might say, well, no shit. I try not to cussing the videos no you know what jay like i don't know it's six and three i thought maybe there was a chance this team the defense had turned around a little bit and the offense was looking good so i wouldn't say never we never thought that but um i i think it's clear as day now that this is not that team um so that's the the best optimism i can give to fans is is that and and honestly that's more important than anything else i mean think about past years with this team when Russell was here, and this isn't a bashing Russell segment, I'm just saying that like they had some of these same struggles. They lost some of these games. And then we were sitting there with no first round pick because we traded that for a Jimmy Graham or Jamal Adams or whoever it may be. Or, you know, it's like 
you're picking 28th and you know, it's, that that's it. So, and you've got so many needs. Um, so this was a team that was still not a Super Bowl team without that draft capital. Um, now they're a team that is close. And I, I think this is a team that has a quarterback. Like now Gino wasn't very, wasn't amazing today, but overall I, I feel pretty confident that Gino is the guy going forward. And at least you feel like you've got a quarterback. Maybe I would still draft one in the mid rounds. I really would. But you've still got someone you feel pretty confident going into next year as your number one, and hopefully they can work something out there. So this team's long-term outlook is positive. That rookie draft class is still good. That doesn't change. So let's enough with that. Enough. Let's get into the game today because um, that's probably why you click the video. Uh, you know, I, it's I I the defense stinks. You know, I don't know what else to say. Um, you know, I said in my pregame video a little bit last night, I did think there were things Carolina can do that could make some headaches for Seattle. And they did that plus some, and they got turnovers. You know, the two interceptions, if Seattle doesn't throw those picks, uh, you know, maybe they win that game. The first one was terrible throw by Geno. The second one, I thought there was an offside. So did Geno, but you can't just assume there's going to be a flag and threw another pick and led to 10 Carolina points. Um, and the defense is just a train wreck, you know, and, and then not having Shelby Harris, who was sick, and then Al Woods leaving in the middle of the game with a heel injury, that run, run defense is just toast. You know, you're, you're left with LJ Collier, Quentin Jefferson on the interior, and those guys, I mean, LJ Collier's not a good pass rusher or a run stuffer. Quentin Jefferson is more of a pass rusher who has not gotten many pressures on the quarterback this year. Um, you know, you've got Puna there and, and Brian Monet, who are decent guys. Puna's good. Brian Monet's a decent role player, but it's not enough. And, and, you know, Al Woods is probably their best defensive lineman, which says a lot for this D-line. And, and I, this is not a knock on big Al Woods. I think all Seahawks fans, we all love big Al Woods, but he's a 36 year old, you know, kind of journeyman um, who's on his second tour of duty with the team. He's on a one-year deal. He's playing on one-year deals. And I hope he comes back next year. I really do. But if that's your best D-line player, like you have a lack of talent on the D-line. Um, and then on top of it, you didn't have your best two D-linemen today with with him and Shelby Harris being out. Um, and, and then show the Panthers another team with 200 yards rushing. It doesn't matter anymore. I mean, Seattle's running game was atrocious too. And if you had Tony Jones, he'd probably run for 200 yards on Seattle. Um, everybody runs on this team right now. It, it, it's a mess. Like, I, Sam Darnold was fine because he didn't have to do anything. Like, I'm not not knocking him. Like, and, and if there's any Panthers fans watching, congratulations. And honestly, I hope you guys win the division. That'd be really cool um, if you did. So um, good luck to you guys the rest of the way. And, um, you know, de definitely a, a talented defense and, you know, some, some stones, some building blocks on offense. Um, but anyways, like, yeah, Darnold didn't have to do anything. Like, he was fine because there was no pressure on him. Um, you know, not, I don't mean like actual like pass rush pressure, which there wasn't a lot of, but no pressure in terms of like the running game was fine. Um, you know, like Seattle's defense did they, they played a little better in the middle of the game after getting down 17 nothing. And listen, some of that's on the offense too. Like the offense turned it over, led to an easy Panthers touchdown. Um, you know, despite as bad as the defense was, the offense had multiple possessions with the football down 20 to 17 and couldn't do anything with it. The running game was atrocious, not having Kenneth Walker hurt today or DJ Dallas. But I don't even know if the run lanes were there for those guys, to be honest. I think it would have been a little bit better because I just don't think Travis Homer's an every down back um, or Tony Jones or whoever um, it may be. But, you know, and, and then it's like, yeah, Gino struggled because there was no threat of a run game. So, and, and Gino wasn't very accurate or good today. Honestly, he had two picks. He could have had five or six. He had a few throws to the sidelines. Chin had one that was he was close to. Um, who was the guy that had the pick and then almost had the second pick? I'm blanking on it right now. Um, no, he had the pick and then he had the second one. I, had, and I don't have the box score up. I'm winging this tonight, guys. I The numbers are bad. Like, we, we know what happened. But, you know, there was another one at the end of the game which could have been a pick. The coaching was bad today. Like, I, and listen, I'm not coming on here claiming these coaches should be fired. Um, I think Pete is a good organizational leader. I think him and John Schneider redeemed themselves with that draft class last year. 
Um, I do think Clint Hurd is a good defensive mind, and you have Sean Desai there as well. But, uh, you know, I, I wonder a little bit, like, and Shane Waldron, I think, has done a good job this year. But Pete today, like, I, I will excuse the challenge on that crazy catch. Um, that the receiver was literally facing that away and the ball like landed between his legs. I swear that only happens against Seattle. Um, I can almost excuse that challenge because it was like, it was almost like a, there's no way he could possibly catch that. I'm throwing the flag. Like there's no way, like still a bad challenge, but I'll excuse it. You know, then he calls a timeout. Seattle's got the, th- I'm, I'm sorry if I'm all over the place. I'm just kind of rambling here. Seattle had a third and 10 at their own four at the beginning of the fourth quarter. And now shame on the, the offense for, getting the snap down to the play clock down to zero before snapping it. But Pete calls a timeout. Just take the penalty there. You've already lost a timeout in the half. You're down by three points. You're going to need that timeout in this game. Third and 12 or third and 10, does it matter? Is the two yards that big a deal? Now, to their credit, they did pick up the first down on the next play. So, you know, I'll excuse this. Maybe it did help them and maybe it did give them the first down, which was important there, at least to get them out of their own territory. I feel like I always yawn during every video. I don't know what it is, but maybe I do these late at night and I've had a long day. <laughs> but um, so, yeah, that was. And then the punt uh, down by 10 with six and a half minutes to go. Only one time out left. They punted. Listen, I'm going to say something right now. I don't think it would have mattered had they gone for it or punted. I think they were going to lose that game. I don't think it would have changed anything. In fact, they probably wouldn't have even picked up the first down. Fourth and eights are not easy to pick up. But they, they punt, like, and it's just such a give up. It's like, how, and here's the thing. I could almost understand punting if you've got, like, let's say a really bad pass defense, but a great run defense. Because, like, listen, they're going to run three times. We'll stuff them, get the ball back, a little better field position. Still four minutes to go here. Get a score, get a stop, maybe, and we can do this. Or if you had the Legion of Boom defense, just a really good defense. This run defense hasn't stopped anybody. You, you think they're going to get the ball back in three plays? Are you kidding me with only one timeout left? The one first down is going to take off three and a half minutes off the clock. And sure enough, they picked up like two of them. Um, you know, they finally stopped him when it was literally just hand the ball up the middle to run the clock. Like, it's again, do I think it changed the outcome of the game? No, like they were in bad position anyways. But like, why are you punting there? Your defense sucks. Like, and you can't stop the run. The one thing they're going to do when they get the ball back is run the football. Like, it doesn't make any sense why you'd punt there, Pete. Like, I love you. I do. I'm a Pete guy, but <laughs> oh my gosh. Like, what are you guys doing? <laughs> you know, it, it's so just bad coaching, bad defense, bad offense today, really. They had a couple nice drives, but um, Igwe Buke, is that, I, I looked it up last night before I did my video how to pronounce it. I hope I kept that in my head. Two really nice kick returns. I'd like to see him continue that. Honestly, I wouldn't mind seeing him get some touches in the backfield. I mean, my gosh, get Tony Jones out of there. And then that one series was like the Tony Jones series. He comes in there for the first time. They do a screenplay to him, which was a disaster, didn't work. Then they run another screenplay to him. Now, in fairness, I think the second one actually had a chance to work, um, but the Panthers knocked it down. Like, but why are we dialing up plays for Tony Jones? Like, gosh. And the screens, like, stop trying them. This team hasn't executed a screen in 10 years. Like, just stop trying to do it. Oh, my gosh. Um, Yeah, just, you know, another team that just ran all over them. And listen, I've been forgiving on the losses, um, but but I'm not going to be forgiving on this one. I, I I don't. This is a bad loss to not a very good football team. I respect Carolina. I think they can do some things well, but it's still a team that I think Seattle should have beaten. But now looking back, I, I don't know. Like I'm not convinced Seattle is that much better than Carolina, to be honest. I don't mean that negatively. Like I, I still stand by everything I said in the, in the positive of the first half of this video. But I don't know, like, especially without Shelby Harris, Al Woods and Kenneth Walker or even DJ Dallas. Um, and like I said, I've been forgiving at the last few losses, but maybe I shouldn't have been like the Tampa Bay loss. If you've watched my video, I was pretty calm. They'd won four in a row. They traveled to Munich and they lost to Tom Brady. I really thought Tampa Bay was a team that was going to start to turn it on. I was like that. That was kind of where I don't know if I said that in the video, but I thought that was a Bucks team that was going to start to get rolling a little bit. And they've been awful. They lost to Cleveland in overtime. They barely beat a bad Saints team on a last-second touchdown. They got boat raced today by the Niners. Now, I think the Niners are a much better team than the Bucks, but they're down to Brock Purdy, a quarterback, 
and they, they steamrolled them. It wasn't like they beat them 20 to 17. They beat them like 42 to 7. Tampa Bay's been bad. That's not a good football team. Rashad White and Leonard Fournette have not been good running backs. They ran all over Seattle. The next week, or the bye week, then the Raiders game. I've kind of forgave that. I was like, well, Devontae Adams, Derek Carr, good. They got Colton Miller back that game. Josh Jacobs is a really good running back. Um, and the offense moved the ball. You know, and that's, I, I don't think that's wrong, but like, the other teams have beaten the Raiders. I, I mean, the Raiders lost to the Rams on Thursday night. They couldn't even, they put up 16 on the Rams. 16. The Rams held them to 16. The Rams are missing everybody in the sun that they have. They stopped the Raiders offense. And then the Rams game. I, I actually made a video and deleted it because I was like, I was a little too pessimistic. And I gave the, the Seahawks a benefit. Now. I was like, you know what? They went on the road. Sean McVay is a really good play caller. I, I forgave them. I was like, you know what? And, and they pulled it out late. They showed some moxie. They had some bad turnover luck that game. And I kind of excused some things, but I don't know now. Like I'm sitting there today going like, you know, last week I was like, well, you know, Sean McVay dialed some things up. I don't, did the Panthers dial? I mean, the Panthers coaching staff is probably all going to be canned in three weeks, four weeks, unless they win the division. Like, and I think Steve Wilkes has done a nice job with that crew. I think he's better than Matt Rule. I think they're fighting hard for him. I respect Steve Wilkes as a football guy, but like Ben McAdoo's their offensive coordinator. Like this is a guy that was run out of New York after a couple seasons and he's not highly coveted anywhere. Like last week it was like, okay, yeah, like if Sean McVay hit the open market, everybody be after Sean McVay to call their offense. No one's going to be after Ben McAdoo to call their plays for them next year. They ran all over Seattle to another 220 yards. It doesn't matter who it is. Donta Foreman, Chuba Hubbard. Um, and then uh, the rookie, I'm blanking. I'm sorry. I'm blanking on names today. Um, he ran all over Seattle as well. So, I mean, it just doesn't matter. Everyone's running on this team. I, I mean, me and you could go out there and get a hundred yards. Probably not. We'd probably get decapitated, but, um, you know, it, it, it's just, I can't excuse the losses anymore. This team's just not that good great anymore like do I think they're the worst team in the league no no you know they're not that like the offense is good enough but when you take away a entire dimension of this offense in the running game then yeah it's not a it's a team that's probably on par with the Carolinas the Atlantas of the world um and stuff like that it's it's not a very good football team would not healthy and then especially take out Al Woods and Shelby Harris on the D-line but the thing is you should have enough depth where like Al Woods shouldn't be this Oh my God, we lost Al Woods. Now we literally, literally cannot stop a run from going for 10 yards. And that's a testament to Al Woods and how good he is, but it's a testament how bad this defense is right now. I made a point on Twitter. I was like, you know, I constantly see people defending, myself included, players on the Seahawks defense. And I'm not knocking anybody. Like, I've defended a lot of these guys too. Like, but there's a defense out there for Cody Barn, which is fine. I'm, again, I'm not saying this is wrong. I'm just saying, but there's defense for Cody Barn. There's defense of Jordan Brooks out there. There's defense of Quandre Diggs and of Puna Ford and all. Someone on this defense stinks. Somebody does. I'm not a big film guy. I don't just don't have time to do it. Tell me who stinks on this. Somebody stinks on the Seahawks defense. They're not all good. Somebody's bad. There were missed tackles left and right today. I, I, I had all these plays in my head. I'm like, I got to remember that for my video. And I've forgotten them. There was a play. It was on the drive where the Panthers ended up... Um, going forward on fourth down and not getting it. Thank God they didn't run the football. There. I don't know what they were thinking. Oh, I guess it doesn't matter now. But, like, they threw the ball to, um, is it LaVisca Chenault? Is that who that is? I, I, sorry, I've forgotten the name. Like, I should, I normally have the box score up and I can check it out. It was a little screen. It was behind. He kind of, he caught it, but kind of stumbled. And he should have been stopped for, like, a loss of two. Jordan Brooks missed a tackle. ends up getting six yards, and they pick up a first down this drive. Like, come on. There were some runs in the backfield. Like, Nuosu had a shot at some guys and some other people, and it's just got away, got five, six yards. I mean, just six-yard runs were like, hey, oh, only six. I mean, they're, they're, there's no stops. There's no negative plays by this defense whatsoever. So th that's that. I, I mean, listen, like, the, the funniest thing about it is, and, you know, this, I, I still think this team actually has a decent shot to get in the playoffs, um, the Giants' schedule is really rough. G Giants and Washington play next week. Um, certainly not an elimination game by any means now. Seattle losing to Carolina, but someone's going to lose that game, um, you would think, unless they tie again. Um, you know, so if Seattle can, yeah, and here I am getting into this. Like, does it matter? I don't know. Like, I do think there's a chance Seattle can still get in the playoffs, but, you know, I don't know. Like, 
I, I, I don't know. Like it's, it, it's, it's there because the Giants' schedule is really tough. Washington's is too. Um, the Giants still have to play Washington. They got to go to the Eagles now. The Eagles, that's the last game of the year, could have things wrapped up. So you know, maybe they're sitting some guys. Then Giants go to Minnesota, and they've got the Colts at home. Like there's a chance the Giants are eight, eight and one. It would shock me. So if Seattle can find a way to win two more games, they may get in. But, you know, it's like, who are they going to beat? You know, uh, and I hate playing this game because I'm, I'm never one that's going to make the video that says season over. This is done. Like, it, it honestly, and, and I'm going to you know, like, really, Jay, shut up, man. But, like, it wouldn't totally shock me if Seattle played really good against San Francisco on Thursday. It wouldn't. It's a division game. They're going to be up for it. You, you're probably getting one of the running backs back, I would think. So, you know, it wouldn't totally shock me if they played a decent game on Thursday night. But, you know, it's like, what are they going to do against the Niners' run game? I mean, the Niners actually have good running backs. Like, McCaffrey is, I don't know if Mitchell's going to be back for that game. But, you know, it's like, oh, you know, Brock Purdy doesn't scare me if someone's saying that. Like, well, did Sam Darnold? Sam Darnold didn't have to do anything. Purdy's going to get to go 10 of 15. And that's all he's going to have to do. A couple little checkdowns to Kittle, he'll be good to go. The Jets, yeah, their quarterback situation isn't great. That's going to be a, a, a maybe a winnable game at home. Are they going to stop their running backs? Who cares if Brees Hall's out? They just pick up anybody they want, throw them in there, he'll run for 150 yards. Um, and, you know, the Rams is a winnable game the last week of the year. And then they go to Arrowhead, which, even if this team was humming, I probably wouldn't pick them to go into Arrowhead and win. Um, so it, it's going to be tough. Like, they needed to win this game. This was the game right here to win. If they'd won this Eight and five, I think this team gets in, but now I, I don't know. And, um, you know, but, but that's it. That's my rant for the game on 20 minutes here. I got to stop the, the important thing. I tried to do the Oreo effect, positive, negative. Let's finish with positive. That draft capital looks amazing for next year. This team really is in good shape short term. Yeah. The sucks they lost and they might miss the playoffs, but it wasn't ever really about this year. I said, this was a six win team coming into the season. That's what I thought. If a lot of things went wrong, I could have seen three to five. And if a lot, some more things went right, I could have seen seven, eight, nine. Maybe that's where they are. Like, And a few things have gone right. So those rookies really took off and developed. And that's about where this team is. They're they're kind of an average-ish team. When they're, when they're loaded up and healthy, they, they have enough firepower to hang in there. But when they're a little banged up and off, they have the firepower, the lack of, lack of you know, in talent, I guess, at this point to to lose to a lot of teams. So it is what it is. Um, the, the important thing, not the important, I'm not trying to excuse the loss, but like the long term is still in great shape. Nothing changes with that. We should still, you should still be feeling pretty good about that. Let's have fun this week. Let's get ready for Thursday night against the Niners. Listen, I don't know about you guys. I'm drinking. I'm going to get a little crazy during that game. Why not? Let's just embrace it. Let's hope they, they can shock them and get the win and, you know, kind of feel good about it. If not, then you know what? The draft picks, the draft pick improves and they're in better shape for that long term. So take it as a win win. We'll see what happens. Um, let me know comments, anything like that. Uh, please subscribe. Um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you to all 185 at the moment that have subscribed. I truly, truly, from the bottom of my heart, appreciate that. My next goal is 200. Um, so hopefully, have that this week sometime is my goal. Um, and to keep growing from there. So yeah, just th that, that's my rant for this game and everything. So please sub up, follow whatever, you know, whatever comment, whatever you guys want to do, thumbs up. I'd appreciate it as always go Hawks. And I will see you guys later. Peace.